Hey guys, welcome back to Time Hop. This is our final episode of our Writer's Week. Please like and subscribe, and I hope to see you guys soon, and I hope you enjoy the episode. As mentioned in my previous video, the Harlem Renaissance may have been centered around Harlem, but its impact was much greater. The Caribbean islands were also huge players in the movement. The movement explored the different facets of being black and our heritage that traced back to Africa and what it was like to be American. It also explored sexuality and being mixed. It was not a one-size-fits-all approach to being black, but all the things that can make you who you are. I'd like to welcome back Tatiana. Today, she will be covering Claude McKay and what his contributions to the Harlem Renaissance was. Enjoy! Claude McKay, born Thetis Claudius McKay in Jamaica on September 15, 1889. As a Jamaican writer and poet, he really pushed forward to learning about the Harlem Renaissance. He was a central figure during the Harlem Renaissance, writing more than five novels, two autobiographies, one nonfiction book about Harlem, and a, and a collection of poetry. His 1922 poetry collection, which was entitled Harlem Shadows, was among the first books published during the Harlem Renaissance. He made a very big name for himself when it came to the community. He died May 22nd, 1948, in Chicago, Illinois. I would like to read one of his poems about him coming to America, and it's called To One Coming North. At first you'll see the joy, the playful snow, like white moths trembling on the tropic air, or waters of the hills that softly flow, gracefully, falling down a shining stair. And when the fields and streets are covered white and the wind-worried void is chilling raw, or underneath a spell of heat and light, the cheerless frozen spots begin to thaw. Like me, you'll long for home where birds' glad song means flowering lanes and leaves and spaces dry, and tender thoughts and feelings fine and strong beneath a vivid, silver-flecked blue sky. But oh, more than the change the southern isles, when spring has shed upon the earth her charm, you'll love the Northland wreathed in golden smiles by the miraculous sun turned glad and warm. Oh, America. And that was about Claude McKay, and that was his poem to One Coming North. Thank you. And now for a quick interview with our special guest star, Tatiana. So Tatiana, why did you pick the three artists that you did? I chose those three um, writers. Well, first, the Dark Moon Collectives, because a lot of people do not know about the Dark Moon Collectives and how they have housed so many poets and so many poets have went to the area in Boston to just vent and learn on each other and that's so much I feel like especially here on SL uh, when it comes to the art world we have to be able to lean on each other and it's okay to come together t for a bigger reason um, I actually also love that it was the Dark One Collectives had young old people who were fresh out of high school and those who already graduated from college you had those who never went to college those who had a degree so it just was a nice um, range now the reason why I picked Angelina well Grimke was because I wanted to um, show the other side of how um, women were because she was a woman that she could pass for white and that's one thing that she that one thing that her family wanted her to do but she was so big to not wanting to be what she saw in the south she was against slavery and being raised by her black father and him being so into the NDAACP 
she just her a lot of her poems and her collections just talk so much about women's rights and talk so much about black people's rights and her struggle of being a biracial woman and i do know there are people out there who do struggle with that so i wanted to um, make sure that that was represented um and also when it came to call mckay because i wanted people to not just talk, I didn't want to just talk about American writers. Um, I wanted to get someone who was not American, who was able to thrive and be a wonderful um, writer in America, but also in his own uh, country of Jamaica. And I love the fact that he did focus so much on the Harlem Renaissance and talking about the women he seen, the buildings that he saw, and the people that he met. Um, so that's definitely why I chose those three. Do you think your selections still have an impact on Black people today? Definitely. Um, especially the collective, um, the Dark One Collective, because to this day, they're still um, around. They're still having people join the collective group. They still um, go and look in people at different colleges. But also, just the things they talk about, especially... Um, in the way that the climate of the world is now, talking about human rights like Angelina did, women's rights, that's something that we're struggling with. Um, talking about black rights the way that all of them did is something that we're struggling with. Talking about coming to America like Claude did and what he's seeing and how what he thought it was was not what it was at first that is something that people they laugh about when they say stuff like oh i'm leaving america but that's something that's big so everything that they talked about and wrote about i don't think that they thought that it was still gonna have to be such an such a topic in 2021 but it is because that's what history does and good poetry can withstand the times and talk about things throughout history so yes they definitely all of them all of their works will stand the time 